it's Courtney with Click It Up A Notch, and I'm starting a new series where I will be answering your questions over video. So it's kind of like where you get to talk, like I do with my friends. So feel free to shoot me any photography or any question you have for me, I guess. Um, send me an email at clickitupanotch at gmail.com and the subject line video Q&A. So our, first, our question today is from Jody, and we're going to talk about indoor sports photography. She has some daughters who play basketball. And she's running into a lot of problems with the lighting, um, the what type, type of lens to use, white balance, all those issues. So she said she sometimes has to bump up her ISO to 1600. Honestly, if you need to, crank it up even higher. 3200, 6400, if that's what you need. Remember, it is better to raise your ISO and have a properly exposed picture than to try and keep it lower for the sake of preventing grain and have an underexposed image. That will be worse for the grain and the noise in your image. Also, um, her aperture is about 4 to 5.6 because she has a kit lens. Um, I'll talk more about the aperture when we talk about the lens, but I would say maybe shoot around 3.2, 4, I guess. Um, and her shutter speed is at 1 100th. Not fast enough. <laughs> you want to, especially sports, you need to be shooting probably at 1 um, 250th of a second. So your shutter speed should say 1 slash 250. Um, I always say at least one one twenty fifth for moving object for moving people. But if you're doing sports, I mean, you know, it's fast paced. So I would say at least two fifty, which is why I say you might need to up your ISO even more because if you need to raise your shutter speed, you need to bring in more light. So we're gonna raise our ISO. So she's wondering about what lens to get. I recommend um, a lot of times when people ask me about a good zoom lens, this is always the one I recommend. It's um, a Tamron seventy five or twenty eight to seventy five. This is a great affordable lens. This is my first zoom lens I got. The aperture goes as wide as 2.8 and it's a fixed aperture so it won't move when you zoom in and out. Um, it's a really affordable lens. Tamron makes great lenses so I would definitely say look into this one. It's a great lens. About autofocus, um, I would definitely let the camera focus. Don't try and do manual focus but make sure you have it set on um, make sure you have one focal point. Um, you want spot metering for um, a, a Nikon. I forget what it's called with Canon, but I'll leave a link below. Um, you want to be choosing what you're focusing on. You don't want the camera to choose it for you, especially if you're trying to photograph your kids in a sport. You want to make sure that you have found your child and you're focusing on them so that the kid beside them isn't in focus and your child is not. Um, as far as white balance goes with gem lighting, that is really hard and she's talked about how she's tried to set it with the fluorescent lighting and all the other options and it hasn't worked. I recommend one of two things. Either do custom white balance, which you can bring your gray card with you and set it up while you're there, um, or use Kelvin's um, for white balance. I'll put both of those links below as well. Kelvin's is, um, if your camera does it, lets you pick the temperature it reads your picture at. So the higher the number, around like 5,000, the warmer your picture. The lower the number, around two or 3,000, is the cooler the picture. So it's a good thing to play around with indoor lighting. If you don't want to do either one of those, here's another easy way to do it. <laughs> Take your gray card with you. Don't be embarrassed. Take a picture of your gray card in the lighting. You don't have to do anything else. Just take a picture of it. When you get home and you're editing, you can sync your pictures. You know, set your white balance on your gray card image and sync the rest of them. I, re I read that tip in Lacey Meyer's breakout session she has at Click and Moms. I highly recommend it. And um, I love that idea. So it's a time saver if you don't have time to set up your custom white balance that you can do that. So that is another option for you with the hard gem lighting. She's also asking about composition ideas. Honestly, I have not done indoor basketball photography. My children don't do it. Um, but I would say just try out different um, different compositions. Uh, try one time standing underneath the goal when they go to shoot so you can get their face of excitement when they shoot. Next time maybe stand on the other side so you can get them from behind and zoom out so you can get them shooting the ball going and really tell the story. If there's bleachers, climb up to the top of the bleachers, get the whole court. Also try and get down low, get on the floor, maybe get their sneakers running, um, get the high fives, the close up, the hugs, um, even the disappointment. I mean, that's really part of everything. You wanna capture the whole moment. Um, you can use the lines of the bleachers to get really cool leading lines when they're running in the other direction, or even the lines of the court if you wanna get down low. 
Um, there's a lot of different options. I would say just play around. Um, I bet you could get some really cool stuff. Get off the bench and just move around the gym and see what you can capture. So if you have any questions, please email me. I would love to answer them in our new video question and answer. You can email me again at clickitupanotch.com. No, that's my website. <laughs> clickitupanotch at gmail.com and title it video Q&A. And that way I know that you want your um, question answered. So thank you, Jody, for the um, great question. And I, if you guys have any tips, if you have done sports photography inside with your kids, um, leave them in the comments. Let us know. Let's help each other. Um, yeah, just help us out. So, uh, okay, that's all. <laughs> have a great day.